Hi, and welcome to this beginner's guide to reverb. Reverb is what happens when sound bounces off the walls in an enclosed space. With hundreds or thousands of discrete echoes blurring together to create a wash of sound. We tend to associate the term reverb with large spaces, like a concert hall or a cathedral, in which the reverb times are long enough to be clearly audible. But all rooms have reverb, even small ones. We just don't notice it. In fact, we don't just not notice it. Our brains actively try to cancel out the room reflections to allow us to hear the source as it really is. To put this another way, we're immersed in reverb all the time in our daily lives and we're acutely sensitive to it. But unless you're in an unusual environment like a gymnasium or a cave, you're likely to be totally unaware of it. This means that signals with no reverb at all can sound rather unnatural, as if they're floating in a void with no context to give them scale, and no sense of depth or dimension. Synth parts are common culprits, hence it's common to have delay or reverb effects built in. But this can also be a problem with close mic parts, like these guitars, recorded with the mic right up against the speaker. These parts all need artificial reverb to fit properly in the mix. But this also presents a great opportunity. Adding reverb after the fact gives us control over the front to back depth of the mix, allowing us to place parts in the background, middle ground, or foreground as appropriate. And the type of space you choose for each part can profoundly change the way the listener perceives the sound, even, or perhaps especially, when the reverb is short enough to become subliminal in effect. Different types of small room setting can make the part sound bright and glossy, or rich and thick. Or warm and intimate. OK, so let's start with a concert hall type setting. This is a large space specifically designed for orchestral music, but in this case with just a single solo cello. I'm running this instance of Pro R as an insert on the channel, so I'm using the mix knob to set the amount of reverb I'm adding. If I turn this all the way down, we can hear that the cello was actually recorded in a small room with a single mono mic, which doesn't really sound as we expect the cello to sound. It sounds much more natural with artificial reverb added. Every concert hall sounds different, of course, but a defining characteristic of the better sounding halls is the way the reverb decays at different frequencies, which in Pro R is defined by the blue EQ style curve. The higher frequencies tend to shorter decay times, which helps to avoid smearing the detail of the sound, while lower frequencies, around 100 Hz and below, tend to decay for longer, helping to add a rich, warm bloom. Note that removing the reverb to cut to the dry signal is actually quite a lot more noticeable and dramatic in effect than adding it back in again. OK, while a concert hall is certainly appropriate, a single cello could also appear in a more intimate setting. So let's switch to a chamber preset instead. This sounds a lot brighter, thanks to the brightness setting. The high frequency decay is still shortened with the blue decay curve. But this time the virtual room blooms at around 200 Hz and the decay times shorten again for the very lowest frequencies. This gives a much more intimate chamber music type sound compared to the hall preset. And the reverb itself being shorter is much less noticeable. But cutting to the dry signal is just as startling and obvious as with the hall. 
arguably even more so in fact, as the chamber reverb is more subliminal in effect, when you're not really aware of it until it's suddenly gone. This is an important concept. Human hearing is acutely sensitive to acoustic cues and clues about the environment you're in, even when you're not consciously aware of it. And as mix engineers, we can exploit this to great effect. Let's try a vocal part. This is Renegade Brass Band with guest singer Gina Walters. And with the vocal totally dry, it sounds stuck on top and disconnected from the rest of the mix. Let's try adding a hall type reverb again. But this time set up as a send effect, so I need the plug-in mix control set 100% wet. The part no longer sounds stuck on top. But if anything, we have the opposite problem. Adding reverb has a tendency to make things seem further away, so the vocal now sits too far back in the soundstage. The distance knob can help to control the front to back depth. When turned all the way down, we hear mostly early reflections, as from nearby walls or the floor. And the vocal part seems closer and more intimate. Conversely, turning distance all the way up gives us predominantly the later tail of the reverb, in which all the thousands of individual reflections blend together to create a wash of sound. The distance knob is more complex than just a crossfade between early and late, also controlling the transition between the two. So each different position of the distance knob is like a different reverb algorithm. But we also have a more fundamental way to change front to back depth. Let's imagine the source is in a large hall, with the microphones or the listener at the opposite end. In this case, the dry signal will arrive at the microphones only very slightly ahead of the first reflections. But if we move the microphones much closer to the source, the dry signal now has only a short distance to travel, while the reflections have to travel to the walls and bounce back again. So the dry signal now arrives significantly ahead of the reverb. We can simulate this with the pre-delay control on the bottom tab which adds a short delay for just the wet reverb signal. Turning this down moves the source further away within the virtual space, while turning it up brings it closer. When you need a large sounding space for a vocal part, but you don't want it to sound like it's off in the distance, pre-delay can be very effective. A setting of around 20 milliseconds is usually plenty, but don't be afraid to go longer if needed even up to 100 milliseconds or beyond. In this case, I don't want a large sounding space for the vocal, or at least not for these verse sections. But we don't need to stick to hall type settings for vocals. In fact, almost any type of reverb can be used on a vocal part in the right context. So let's try dialing in some settings from scratch. I'll start by turning down the space knob to create a smaller, more intimate room model. And I'll also turn up the brightness knob to create a glossier, brighter sound. Which I can make even glossier sounding by shelving up the decay time for the high frequencies. If we compare this to the dry signal, the reverb adds a sense of depth and space, but it also adds a shiny, glossy finish which suits this section of the song much better than the hall reverb, in my opinion. There's a slight problem with this setting, though, in that it tends to exaggerate sibilance. The 
those S's get smeared and lengthened by the bright reverb and become much more obvious as a result. We can mitigate this in various ways, shortening the reverb time around the sibilant range at about 8 kHz can help, as can dipping this region with the yellow EQ curve. Another good option is to add a de to the reverb send, patched before the reverb. So S's are ducked from the signal before they hit the reverb. If we once again compare to the dry signal, the difference is pretty dramatic. But when listening to the part in context, you don't really notice the reverb specifically. You just accept that the vocal seems to be in a bright sounding, yet intimate space, like a small tiled room. And we can exploit this fact. Changing the reverb tells the listener that we've moved into a different space, as if we've walked through a door into a different room. And this allows us to send subconscious cues that the part isn't static, but progresses and moves as the song progresses. There's a couple of different ways we can achieve this. Unlike many reverbs, Pro-R allows you to adjust all parameters, including space, without any unpleasant glitching or dropouts. So you can automate parameters to change the type of space you're creating. Or more traditionally, you can set up multiple different reverb sends with different types of reverb, and automate the channel sends to switch between them for different parts of the song. I'm going to do both. I'll automate the space parameter up for the last line of the verse. Then switch to send to the hall type setting we had earlier for the chorus. Notice how this change of reverb helps to emphasize the change from verse to chorus and also from chorus back to verse, when I switch back to the short glossy setting. Like the music moved on somewhere else, and the sound of the vocal changed to reflect that. We've therefore achieved a few different things with our reverb. At the most fundamental level, we've stopped the part from sounding stuck on top and disconnected from the rest of the mix, as the dry vocal does. gently coloured the vocal part in ways that would be impossible to achieve with EQ, making it bright and shiny in the verses, but big and warm for the choruses. And switching to different reverb types for different parts of the song helps to increase the emotional dynamic range, creating greater contrast between sections. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.